the fun stuff, baby. We've only got two characters left, and we saved the best for last. Now it's time for Kane. Kane has probably killed people. Oh, okay, we're getting right back into the morbid stuff, huh? Okay. Well, look, we won't sugarcoat it. When Kane snapped Gummy Goo away, he justified it out of concern and horror over what could happen if he were to start confusing who was human and who was an NPC. The look on his face and sudden change of tone implies that Kane knows exactly what would happen, and that he's probably ended at least one other character as a result. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna go drink water. It's been a while since I've done that. I mean, think about it. We know from the first episode where Kane kept trying to make an exit for the circus gang that he'll do just about anything to keep them happy and entertained. If Gummy Goo being a new cast member would have been safe for everyone, he would have done it. So there's definitely a darker side to the circus Kane is protecting the others from. We still believe in you, buddy. On that note, Kane's redemption and freedom. While Kane is an AI more advanced than anything we have IRL, at least we hope he is, it's quite telling that he seems to have vivid emotional reactions and fears. It's possible for Kane to make mistakes, interact independently with the cast members, and as we saw earlier, feel genuine horror over what he's done in the past. We're going to play around with the idea that Kane might just be slowly gaining sentience in a more human sense, and we have one intriguing idea as to how this might go. Not even I know what's out there. We already talked about how Kinger is losing his mind in the circus, likely due to overwhelming responsibility and despair over wanting to save his life from abstraction by any means, but what if that's not the cause? What if, say, someone is taking on that burden for Kinger, someone whose direct job it is to keep the circus members entertained so they don't go insane. That's right, Kinger is not going crazy out of too much time in the circus, but rather because Kane took just enough of his memories upon himself to save him at the cost of making Kane more self-aware than he was ever meant to be. A stretch? Maybe? Okay, definitely, but if by some miracle this is even remotely accurate, we reserve our right to say we told you so. And for the grand finale, we have the soapy sidekick himself, Bubble. Bubble is the main villain. Okay, this theory is like 80% joking, but there's still that 20% that feels like it's a vague possibility, so hear us out. Bubble is a goofball, a silly little guy even. Despite being an AI like Kane, he does his own thing all the time, whether it's licking up Pomni's vomit, ew, or somehow enjoying the sensation of being popped repeatedly. You parasites! The really interesting thing about Bubble, however, is that he seems to be completely unaffected by anything going on in the circus. Cursing, for instance. When Pomni or anyone else swears, it's censored out with wacky cartoon sound effects and censor bars. When Bubble swears, it's simply bleeped out, to the point where even Kane is horrified. Bubble, you can't say that. No matter how many times he's popped, Bubble can always return as quickly as he disappears, indicating that Bubble is his own entity entirely. <laughs> <laughs> This could lead to a number of possibilities. Maybe, for instance, Bubble is a virus that invaded the computer, perhaps from a rival company. Or maybe Bubble is an AI, but somehow gained sentience before Kane, and the latter is trying desperately to stop his reign of terror. But there's one question we have to answer more crucially than any other. What did Bubble say? All right, first off, props to Glitch, because this is the hardest I've laughed at a YouTube video in a while. Sounds but as for what Bubble likely said, even Kane was offended. This implies that it's something Kane would understand to be offensive, and yet something the censors didn't pick up, unless our theory about Bubble being immune to censorship is true. Our theory for this one? Bubble said slurs. Like, a lot of slurs, but they were all made up. One YouTube commenter suggests that Bubble came up with slurs for candy people in that very moment, and that doesn't seem too far-fetched, honestly. Alternatively, maybe he was hitting on Kane, and the latter knows it can never be. Ah, oh, forbidden love. So. Sweet, yet so bitter. 